Welcome to the Grand Union Canal in Uxbridge, coming up this week. It's Marcus's turn to cook in the kitchen. We'll be taste testing a selection of teas. Marcus strips down for self-care. Wow, well that sounds exciting. We better roll titles. Yep. ready for a cup but now it's time to try out some left field teas. What are we starting off with then Paul? The English rose. Let's try it. There's nothing but quite like an English rose of course. I'm an Irish rose. Mmm it's quite subtle. I'm not sure if it's supposed to have uh, some sort of fruitiness to this. It's a black tea with flavouring. Uh, it doesn't say what the flavouring is. Um, well, rose. <laughs> I, don't, I don't really think that you need any milk with it. I think it's good enough on its own. Yeah, I'm not one that likes to drink um, like sort of black, regular black English breakfast tea on, on its own without milk, but this is actually quite good. Maybe we should do this more often. I think so. Let's move on to the next one then. And you've picked out a Russian caravan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a century in the making, a classic blend of rich, refreshing Chinese teas with a delicate hint of smoke. Well, let's give it a go. It sounds rather exotic. It is sounding exotic. Mm, it smells just like regular tea. You know, this is very drinkable too, I think, without the milk. I think this tastes rather mellow and um, it's mm. a little bland. It's, um, I think this would work well with ice, like as mm, an, ice, an iced tea, like a, as an iced tea with lemon. Um, you know, it's not bad. Yeah, pretty good. And number three. Ooh. I thought, I thought it said tipsy. It says tippy. A tippy Assam. Black tea. This golden tipped tea is sweet and malty. Scrumptious with jam and crumpets. Mm. Well, I do like a nice bit of crumpet, but let's see what the tea's like. Oh, not so fussed on this. I don't know if it's stewed, but... um, No. There's something a little bit too hard about it it definitely tastes a lot more um pungent and a lot more strong compared to the other ones it does i'm just thinking it may be because it's it's stewed a bit the last one is a marrakesh mint and it speaks for itself it's, it's a flavorite green tea so let's give it a go might be stewed <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is with the green tea Oh, mm. that's nice. With green tea, it doesn't matter if the tea bag's been in longer. I don't think green tea actually stews that much. Um, Not as much as the uh, regular teas. So this one is, um, so this one could clean your palate. Um, I think it'll help with greasy foods. Definitely. And of course, the thing is with green tea, you wouldn't have that, you wouldn't have it with milk anyway. This is rather refreshing too. It is. I didn't actually read out um, the synopsis of the first with the English rose. I should say that it's a village fate tea for scones and strawberry jam with delicate flavours of glorious mm, rose. That sounds nice right about now. And I'd like to sort of uh, thank, of course, uh, Whitard of Chelsea for these selection of gorgeous teas. Um, and, and I would like to thank you for giving it to me as a Christmas present. It was a Christmas present. There's only one thing missing. What's that? Cake. 
We'd really love to know what you think about the show. You can contact us on our email. It's marcusandpaul at gmail.com. One of the easiest things we can do to relax is to have a bath. Most of us have one in the house after all. So today, we're going to take a look at the seven benefits of a self-care bath routine. Oh my god, it's hot. Yeah, it is me. I'm in the bath. Um, I couldn't see the flipping auto cue, so that's why I've got my glasses on. Most of the time I wouldn't be wearing my glasses in the bath, and you probably wouldn't either unless you're reading a book perhaps, not a electronic device. You don't want that to fall into the bath, I'm sure. Today we are looking at the seven benefits of a self-care bath routine. Um, so here we are. Step number one is that a bath helps to relax the body. It's right. Uh, it's just you know you've got to make sure you've got the right temperature. Um, too hot is a bit scalding, and you could end up like Princess Margaret allegedly. Um, and too cold, though well, that's not going to be relaxing. It'd be too much of a too much of a chill then, wouldn't it? Number two, bathing is easy to include in the daily self-care routine. And most of us, as I said at the start, have got a bath in our homes. If you've got a shower, I suppose it depends what kind of shower you have. Number three, bathing helps the body wind down for sleep. Well, I'm recording this in the middle of the afternoon and I don't particularly want to sleep but it will help relax me for later on tonight. Number four, bathing helps the body's aches and pains. Well, if like me, you're 21 and you're starting to feel a little bit sore around the neck, around the legs, around the shoulders, around the feet, around the head, around the fingers, around... Oh, hang on a minute. Did I say 21? Uh, yes, I meant 19, of course. Um, <sighs> Bailing's great for stress relief. Easy for a detox in at number six. Yeah, it helps get rid of all the antioxidants in the body, flushes out all the yucky stuff, as well as getting you clean. Warming a chilled body. So here are my top tips for enjoying a bath. Number one, free up some interrupted time. It's called me time. Number two, fill the bath with warm water. Not too hot, because you don't want to be scalded. Number three, while the water is running, get yourself some lovely suds or bath salts. Uh, under the running water, it really churns them up. It's fantastic. Number four, have a bath mat ready to step out onto because the last thing you want to do is step onto a wet floor. And number five, make sure you've got a towel handy to dry yourself with because even if you step onto the lovely mat on the floor and there's no towel, well, it kind of ruins the experience. Oh, and I should have pointed out, glasses and hair cap. What are, what are they called? Caps? Char caps. Oh, and just as a little PS, glasses and shower caps are optional extras. Okay, I'm done. 
and thanks to Teach Smart with me for those fantastic tips. We really missed Eurovision last year, but don't worry, it will be back this year from Rotterdam. So why not join us on May 22nd for our Eurovision special. So today we're going to be making black pudding scotch eggs as seen on Ready Steady Cook. Now I didn't make them myself on the show, it was the lovely Ellis Barry. So I'm going to be having a go at it today, but there's a slight twist. Um, the twist is, is that not only do we have black pudding, and we're using 240 grams of black pudding, but we're using 240 grams of sausages as well. So it's basically ordinary link sausages with the skins taken off. And lovely coating is going to be made with um, egg, of course, so we've got five eggs, four for the actual scotch eggs and one for the coating. Um, breadcrumbs, so we've got uh, 250 grams of breadcrumbs and 175 grams of plain flour. So we'll put them all together and see what we come up with. So we're going to start off with the black pudding. Um, so it needs to be sort of broken up and squished around a bit to make it to make it softer. I've got a fork handy in case this doesn't work with the hands, but squishing, scrunching. It's a good idea to maybe take it out of the fridge a little bit beforehand, it makes it softer. And this just all goes straight into the bowl, all the little little bits and pieces, and we'll get our link sausages. Um, they're all quite squished already, so they can just go straight into the bowl. Squishy, squishy, squashy, squashy. Get it all nice and lovely. Now the trouble is, of course, for the next stage, I need to dry hands. So I'm just going to go and wash them because they're a bit mucky. Okay, so dry hands and we've got our mixture. Now what we want to do is to try to get them sort of evenly into eight balls. Um, so I put them onto a bit, of, a bit of parchment paper after that. So there's one. And it doesn't matter that they're not the shape of eggs because we're going to be wrapping them round eggs of course so just ball shaped at the minute nothing wasted here at all and and it as i said it doesn't matter if they're not all exactly the same size because you'll see what we're going to do next so we've got our little balls of, of magic and now what we're going to do we're going to squish them into flat patties like this and we'll put them onto another piece of parchment. So give them a bit of a roll, a bit of a smack. They look like little mini burgers at the moment. Getting them as flat, as flat as possible. Hitting it there again. one. So what we need to do now is to get our four eggs boiled. Uh, it has to be cold water in the pan, not not warm or boiling water. So we want cold water in the pan. That's, that's about enough. Uh, then what we do, so we've got five eggs here. One of course is for the, uh, the coating later. So we're going to put four of these uh, lovely eggs into the cold water before we start to boil it. So there we are, one, two, three, four. And then we turn on. And what we need to do now is to bring that to the boil and leave it boiling for three minutes. So while the eggs are on the boil behind me, um, I'm just going to lightly beat the one remaining egg, which will be for part of the coating. Uh, to build the flour and the breadcrumbs, and uh, that should only take a few seconds. And by that stage, hopefully, the eggs will be boiled. 
So that's about three minutes of simmering time on the eggs. So we take them off and gently bring them over to the sink where I've got a, a spoon here and I'm going to put them into a strainer. One, two, three, and four. And moving that pan slightly out of the way because I don't want to scold myself, then what we're going to do is a bit of a shock to the system on them. We're going to run them over cold water like that. And then we're going to transfer them into this little bowl here because the next bit's really fun. This is the bit where it's all going to go terribly wrong because this is where we tap our eggs and take the, the shell off each one and hopefully they will still they will stay together uh, in one piece. Oh, I can see already that the yolk is quite soft in the middle um, and that is exactly what we wanted. And then what we want to do is to take one of the, the eggs, the boiled eggs, and just work it around that egg um, as best as possibly can. And then what we do is we take one of the other patties and put it on the top and then just gently sort of work both those bits of meat around it. Actually, it's, it reminds me a bit of an Easter egg where you get the, the two halves. So there we are. Just work that meat around nicely so that the egg has completely been encased. It has disappeared. Um, next stage then we put it into the flour, roll it around a bit and it'll hold it together. Into the egg that we had beaten earlier and then into the lovely breadcrumbs. Work them all around. So here we are. One two, three, and, and four. So once you've got the four all sitting there ready, they need to go into the fridge for half an hour and that will help them set before we then have the really fun part. So half an hour has now passed. We've taken the scotch eggs out of the fridge and two at a time going to ease them in very, very gently into the deep fat fryer and they'll go in for about six to eight minutes. So very gently. There they go. And during the time you can sort of maneuver them around a little bit once, just to make sure that they're browned the whole way through. So just sort of like turn them around a little bit to make sure that they're evenly browned. Just like that, They're coming, come out really, really lovely. Don't be fooled by the colour. They may look quite brown already, but of course, this is raw meat we're talking about, so it really does need between six to eight minutes in the deep fat fryer at around 175 degrees Celsius. Um, you can also cook them in a pan, like a shallow pan. Uh, with about a litre's worth of uh, vegetable oil, or the oil of your choice. Um, we've got three litres of uh, vegetable oil in the deep fat fryer. So they really have turned out absolutely fantastic looking. So what you do next is you very, very gently grab one and have a plate with uh, some kitchen roll on it and place one on and very gently again number two be very careful of course with the hot oil place it onto the the kitchen roll and set aside and then start all over again with the the other two all four are now done and uh, i think there's only one thing we have to do and that's to tuck in don't you mm -hmm. oh wow look at that it's absolutely perfect. Well, I think those black pudding scotch eggs turned out pretty well, even if I do say so myself. I guess you could make them as a brunch, a breakfast, a dinner. It just shows you how versatile they really are. Till next time, folks. 
Cheers. Good night. Wow, those black pudding scotch eggs were a treat. And I'm sure you really enjoyed seeing Marks in the bath. <laughs> well, I'm sure you didn't expect that at the start of the show. So you'll just have to join us again next week when absolutely anything could happen. Isn't that right, Paul? Anything, everything. Join us then. Bye. Bye. <laughs>